what's going on guys so before I get started I wanted to say thank you to all of the recent subscribers all of the OG subscribers not that there's I mean there's quite a bit of you but thank you to everybody uh, I am just under 150 subscribers away from a thousand so hopefully we'll hit that benchmark here in the next few weeks there's a lot of content coming there's a lot of stuff going on so Thank you. I just wanted. I just want to say thank you. So today in this video, we will be doing engine bay prep. We bought all of the stuff to do the engine bay and Lee's car last last night and the day before. We got pretty much everything, and we got most of the fuel lines mocked up for what we need. So we're going to drop the motor back out. We're waiting on the oil pan to come back from getting the bung welded in. And we're gonna pop the oil pan on and then take the motor back out and we bought paint stripper for the engine bay because like I know I said in the last video there's like four layers of paint in this engine bay and it's it's horrible so we're gonna take it down to as far as far down to bare met metal as possible and then build up so we picked up a couple cans of paint remover we got some filler primer to help build up and cover up not really cover up but like there's a lot of high and low spots so basically filler primer will build up a thick layer a thicker layer not literally this thick but a thicker layer than normal that way when you sand it you can make it all smooth so we got a couple cans of that for the bay we've got some brillo pads so that we can scuff the bay we've got some tack cloth in order to wipe down the bay when we're done along with some wax and grease remover this is the color we're going to go with for the engine i mean for the valve cover um because it's got gold dr20s on it so we figured this this would be a decent match for the dr20s and then for the bay we went with camilla red pearl which is a factory eg sedan well eg color in general um the i think it's an ex color actually it's called camilla red pearl but it's actually purple um and they they come on like the eg exs for the most part is what i've seen it's a it's kind of a rare color to find and i've actually i've personally wanted one in this color for a very long time and then here goes lee we uh we were talking about it and i showed him the color and he fell in love with it as well so we're going to be doing the engine bay and eventually the exterior of the car as well, the same exact color. But for now, we're going to focus on the engine bay. Hopefully, as, as long as everything goes as planned, I don't see why the car can't be running at the end of next week, hopefully, if everything goes as planned. So we're going to start with dropping the motor out. And from there, we will start prepping the bay. All right, so I went to work while I was gone. Lee pulled the swap back out, and he got we got most of the wiring pulled. Well, all of the wiring pulled back through. We got the brake booster out because whoever painted this before painted the brake booster the same color, so that's going back black. And we pulled the master cylinder and everything out. Um, surprise with not surprisingly, but. In case you guys didn't know, compression fittings on brake lines are illegal, so I heard. And there's one right at the master cylinder. So that's a safety hazard. So for Lee, I'm going to go ahead and remake both of these lines that go into the proportioning valve. But for now, we are going to get a layer of aircraft paint remover on the engine bay and try to get it down to bare metal. Alright, so we've got it, we used two cans so far, and the whole base covered. The can says give it about 15 minutes normally, 
Um, I suggest using gloves. I got a little bit on my knuckle and it kind of sort of hurts. Um, it's just, it's, it's more irritating than anything. But try to use gloves and eye protection and don't do what I did and not use gloves or eye protection. But you let it sit for about 15 minutes and it starts to get like this wrinkle effect. And it's only been on there for maybe three minutes, four minutes. So we're gonna let it sit. And then you can either use like a plastic scraper like what they use for Bondo and you can scrape it off or an old debit card or basically anything soft you don't want to use anything metal because you gouge the metal underneath but once it's got its uh curing time i guess you can call it we'll peel it or scrape it and then we'll hit it with some water and dawn dish soap and some brillo pads and get the remaining stuff off and then after that it'll be a clean bay so we got the engine bay coated and there's just so many layers of paint on this engine bay that even the aircraft paint remover um, didn't have a good time with it. In some areas like the strut towers, I guess the paint was thin. So those areas kind of sort of got down to bare metal. But as you can see, there's bare metal. Then there's white, which is the original color. Then at some point it was green. Then at some point there's some purple in there. Then it was like blue turquoise. And then it was red. So we're fighting with like three or four layers of paint. So that's probably going to be it for tonight. Tomorrow I'm going to go try to find something stronger so that hopefully we can get this down to bare metal and then start doing paint prep. It literally like, it literally picks up the paint and makes it start peeling. So pause. So, today I basically, well, our failed attempt with the spray can paint stripper. Mm -hmm. So, now we're using the stuff that comes in a can that you brush on. And I've been going at it with a wire wheel for the last, like, three or four hours, pretty much. So, we did heat that up. I heated, like, the strut tower up before we... Right now, it's, like, 50 degrees in Florida, or it's probably even less, but uh, my father says that apparently because it's cold, that's why the spray can didn't really work too well. So now we're heating the, all the red stuff up with a propane torch and then hitting it with a paint stripper. And it does seem to be working a little better than it was before. But I've been using the wire wheel attachment on the drill and I've just been going at it. I didn't really do any time lapsing or anything because I didn't want to bore you guys with me stripping the engine bay. So I pretty much got this corner of the bay almost done. Then I have a smaller uh, wire wheel cup for the back corners to get in there real good. The goal plan is to hopefully tomorrow we get the bay finished and then we go at it with the Brillo pads and some soap and water get it all nice and clean, prime it, let it sit, and then Saturday we will probably be shooting it with the paint color. So we got the firewall or got going on the firewall um, turns out heat is a really good thing and once you heat it up and you basically turn the paint almost black and you hit it with a wire wheel it comes right off so we're almost there gonna get that corner and we're hitting this side with some more aircraft paint remover but hopefully by the end of this video will probably have the engine bay primed at least so that because the paint stripper is so erosive it's already causing the uh the engine bay to rust in some spots so next up we're gonna get the paint stripper on and finish up the engine bay we're almost there
in here doing the damn thing. I uh, had some medical issues again, so uh, I haven't been here for the last couple of days. But Lee's been here putting in work. What'd you get done, Lee? Basically, he's been here wet sanding the whole engine bay, trying to get as much out as possible. And then uh, we have a couple cans of filler primer we're gonna hit the whole engine bay with. We're gonna try to get everything under the uh, core support there. Probably just paint it black or something. But it's getting there. We're gonna take it over to the car wash and try to pressure wash the subframe and the um, steering rack and all that stuff. Just want to get all the signs that it was red, like out of here. So, wire wheel, all of the proportion of valve and the brake lines and stuff. And then, should be ready to get primed. All right, so we got the engine bay. Just about as good as it's gonna get. My dad and Lee are wiping it all down with tack cloths. They've already gotten it with the wax and grease remover. So now, we're gonna hit it with the filler primer and get it all one color. Then after we do that, we're probably gonna just paint the brake lines black because they were all painted red and all nasty, so. And then we're gonna paint the subframe as well. But for now, come along as we paint. engine base all primed now uh, disregard all the brake lines being gray because we're gonna move those out of the way and wrap them so that they don't get painted with the base coat but otherwise it looks really good as one color it looks way different compared to what it was when it was five different color well not five different colors but it had five layers of rattle can spray paint on it so we'll see how it goes I see cop lights. Welcome to Holly Hill. All right, so we got the engine bay all painted. It, the paint code for this is R86P, which is technically Camilla Red Pearl. And it's a factory color, I wanna say on EXEGs, when it, on the coupes and the sedans. Right now it's kinda dark just cause it's under fluorescence and stuff, but tomorrow morning I'll push it out and I'll get some good, uh, some good pictures of it. It's, it's basically covered the firewall has a little blotchiness to it down in the bottom so we're probably going to buy another can and just go over it one more time but i think it looks way better than the red and the green and the purple and the white and the yellow yeah yeah and the turquoise so next step we're gonna let it sit overnight then the subframe we're gonna jack it up pull the subframe out and uh get that all cleaned up and painted and hopefully maybe next weekend we can make some noise
All right, so that's going to be it for this video. The next video you see, we are going to be redoing some brake lines, repainting the subframe, installing the booster, the master cylinder, the clutch master cylinder, getting all that stuff ran, and then we are going to be installing the motor. So the next video you see, the motor will be in for good. We still have to do the timing and a couple other little things, but all that's going to be done before we put the motor in. So that is it. Until next video, like, subscribe, share. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.